You guys seem to enjoy the recent video on the Maryland Museum and its strange artifacts, so I found an article on the similar subject of Taxonomania. Taxonomania is the study of creatures that are claimed to be completely fictional, but in some cases crosses into the realms of cryptozoology. Catalogues of invented species from the pop-eyed frog to the Loch Ness Monster. Let's take a look at this subject that brings together taxidermy, cryptozoology and zoology and see just what creatures we can find. Welcome to IF videos on history, mystery and the strange. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a video again. No matter how diligently researchers try to keep fiction out of research papers, on occasion things do find their way through the cracks. Sometimes this is done with malicious intent, with people trying to corrupt real research programs. Other times it's purely by accident. Looking at the books by Michael Oles, The Art of Naming, we can see how Austrian entomologist Hans Malecki used this to his advantage. The Austrian entomologist is considered a world authority on the study of caddish flies. The man is also known by the pseudonym Otto Sutermin. This alter ego wrote papers on the discovery of two new flea species from Nepal. Ceteno Fatalimus Nepalanus and Amalarius Fossurius. Most didn't see anything strange in the names given to these new types of flea or the description and claimed locations that these insects were said to have been found. Eventually, people who looked a little closer at this discovery found that the discovery was a complete fabrication. In 1972, a short article was printed in the Entomologist Nakrich Timblat by F. G. A. M. Smith, a well known flea researcher at the Natural History Museum in London. Its title was Notes on Two Fictitious Fleas from Nepal. Smith picked through the article piece by piece and line by line. He uncovered that almost all the information was bogus, not just the details of the two fleas, but also their mammal host. Canis fossa, canine gravedigger, when the Latin is translated, and Apodemus roseus, the pink wood mouse, are both animals of complete fantasy. Hoping to sell his scam, Malachy included flea species that are real as a comparison. Moving on from insects to amphibians, and in 1978, the pop eyed frog was added to the Journal of the Herpetological Association of Africa. Given the scientific designation of Rana magna ocularis, biologists and zoologists were excited by the new find. The animal was described as being flat with huge bulbous eyes protruding from the head, a prominent tongue unusually extending out of the mouth, body and limbs highly flattened dorsoventrally. Dorsal lateral folds were absent, otherwise it resembled Rana pipiens, Rana pipiens being the northern leopard frog. The northern leopard frog is a species of leopard frog from the true frog family, native to parts of Canada and the United States. It is the state amphibian of Minnesota and Vermont. It was said that pop-eyed frog could be found in or alongside busy paved roads especially in spring. The unique body adaptations were claimed to help it keep a low profile, making it harder for predators to spot. Regular frogs hide in reeds and grass. The pop-eyed frog prefers roads and pavements. One thing that was a source of confusion for researchers is that dead specimens all displayed an unusual zigzag pattern on their backs. Okay. If you haven't guessed it yet, this specimen was a complete fraud, going so far as to be an obvious joke. The pop-eyed frog was obviously roadkill, its appearance coming from the effects of a car rolling over an unfortunate regular old frog. This story does highlight just how easy it is for fake animals to find their way into well-established scientific journals. 
even with serious species descriptions, it's only in exceptional cases that the inventory number and existence of a type of species are reviewed before being published. There has long been a history of this practice. We can go all the way back to the 6th century when it was published that there were many of the cryptids we know and love today running around the planet. Descriptions of animals like Nessie, Bigfoot, and the Yeti were published alongside animals like giraffes, elephants, and lions. This bringing us onto the topic most of you guys visit the channel for, cryptozoology. The field of cryptozoology studies the legends and myths of mystery animals in the hope of proving that they exist. Stories, legends, and folktales from around the world have a basis in truth, and the legends of these beasts talk of well-hidden, little-known animal species. This is when we meet Nessiterus rhombopteryx, or, as you may know it better, Nessie. The superstar cryptid has long been thought to be a surviving plesiosaur, this because of the description given by witnesses of the fabled Scottish creature. Those that have seen it say it is characterized by a large body, slender neck, and a small serpentine head. It has four large, paddle-like swimming extremities. Skeptics say that this is impossible, as plesiosaurs went extinct millions of years ago. So this is where Taxonomania steps in with an answer. It defines the Loch Ness Monster as a separate species, with the help of underwater photos, along with sonar diagrams caught by Rhines and Sir Peter Scott. The animal was named formally as Nessiterus rhombopteryx, the first part of Nessiterus coming from its home of Loch Ness, the second part being derived from the Greek Teres. Since the days of Homer, this term has been used to mean a marvel or wonder. The specific epithet is a combination of the Greek rhombus or rhombodial and terex for fins or wings. Scott and Rhines write that literally translated, Nessiterus rhombopteryx means the Ness wonder with a diamond fin, this giving us the literal translation of Nessiterus rhombopteryx as the Ness wonder with a diamond fin. The lake monster is not the only cryptid that has received an official classification and name. The wild man of the forests, Bigfoot, may soon also be officially recognized by its own species designation. Researchers and Sasquatch fans alike have often pointed to the similarities shared with the animal that is known as Gigantopithecus. This just as Nessie was compared to a plesiosaur. Like Nessie, Bigfoot also has cousins found around the world, the Alma, Yowie, or Yeti to name a few. In the book, Bigfoot Prince, anthropologist and Bigfoot researcher Grover S. Krantz talks about the idea of Bigfoot and Sasquatch legends and the different names given in different regions for an animal that is most likely the same species, and then suggests a few possible scientific names for the hominid creature. Krantz says if Bigfoot should ever be proven real and be part of the Gigantopithecus genus, then Gigantopithecus canadius would be the best choice. Krantz also ponders the connection between Sasquatch and Australopithecus, Australopithecus being an ancestor of man which went extinct long ago but shows that our genus originated in Africa. Following the same pattern we were given before, we might decide to name it Australopithecus canadinius. Krantz is not the first to assign a scientific classification to Bigfoot. Back in 1971, researcher Gordon Strasenberg made the argument for naming the animal Paranthropus elendurelli. So we have a description, diagnosis, name, and publications for these cryptids. What else is needed? One tenant of taxonomy is that, first and foremost, what is published must be valid. In the case of Nessie, we have all these parts in place. The name should be accepted as an official title. To further cement the naming of Nessie, the researchers Scott and Rhines compare their newly defined species, Nessiterus rhombopteryx, to other lake monsters, singling out those that have also been formally named. The oldest example they highlighted was 
the Massachusetts sea serpent named Megophius monstrosus. This animal was officially named back in 1817 by naturalist Constantine Samuel Vraffensquare Schmaltz. Then in 1958, Bernard Hovelmans, a man known as one of the founders of cryptozoological research, described the Megalotara longicoilus, another plesiosaur-like creature that is claimed to live in North American waters. Over his many years of research, the man became involved in many hunts for proof of cryptids. He was famously involved with a cryptid named Homo pongoids, better known as the Minnesota Iceman. Taxonomy providing a very scientific sounding name for something that many said was a hoax. The taxonomic method of species identification and description is so closely linked with the naming process that it is almost impossible to differentiate between the two. This is particularly important in cryptozoology. The object range of taxonomy is empty because most systematic scientists would agree that the species being described do not exist. Taxonomy and naming both focus on the same subjects, an animal or other biological being waiting to be both described and named in a way that can be presented to the academic community. This then providing a seal of approval for creatures that are too often regarded as myth or frauds. What cryptids do you know that have a name given using taxonomy? What name would you propose for your favorite untitled cryptid? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like what I do here on the channel, hit that red button, like and share. You can catch the latest by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.